All right, hopefully you had a chance to look at number seven. It's because the number seven, six and seven here, really kind of tie this whole notion of comparative advantage together. If you can get these two, you'll really, I think, understand the principle of comparative advantage and why it's so, in essence, magnificent. All right, let's go to number six. It says, refer to figure three, four. So we have it up here, which we've drawn, all right? It says, initially, Barney is spending one half of his time making pies and the other half of his time making bread. So I've put it here. So Barney's spending half his time making pies, which will give him seven pies, and half his time making bread, which gives him 3.5 breads, okay? That puts Barney right here at point A on his production possibility frontier. This is what he's producing, three, five breads per hour and seven pies per hour, all right? Okay. <clears throat> Betty is doing the same. So Betty is cutting her time in half as well. So half of her time spent on bread means she gets 10 breads, and half her time spent on pies means she gets 7.5 pies in her hour of labor, all right? So this is what they're both doing. They haven't, <clears throat> haven't traded yet. They haven't really kind of seen the advantage of it yet. Now the question goes like this. Relative to this initial situation, Barney and Betty could specialize according to the principle of comparative advantage, and both could benefit from this new arrangement, provided they agreed that one loaf of bread will trade for somewhere between. Here's the key. All right. We already said that Barney has a comparative advantage in pies, and that Betty has a comparative advantage in bread. Okay? We also made this note. We know he specializes in pie, and every pie cost him a half of bread. And for Betty, every pie cost her three quarters, three, four thirds of a bread. All right? So now, if they specialize, which means he specializes Barney in pies and she specializes in bread, what price would they trade at? Okay? In other words, this is a hard problem. So let me go right to the answer and work back the other way, okay? So one loaf of bread will trade for. All right. We know that for Barney, one bread equals two pies, okay? And we know for Betty that one bread equals three quarters of a pie, all right? So let's say he's producing pies and he says, Barney says to himself, you know what? I would love another bread. What would Barney have to pay to get another bread? Well, you know that, all right? Every time Barney wants another bread, he has to give up two pies, right? He'd have to give up two pies to get that extra bread. Now go to Betty. You know that she specializes in bread really well, but let's say she's right here at point A, okay? And she wanted another bread. Well, if she wants another bread, how many pies does she have to give up? Well, for every bread, it costs her just three quarters of a pie. So she would only have to go up to three quarters of a pie to get another bread. All right. So in other words, bread is relatively cheap for her, and bread is relatively expensive for Barney. In other words, the price for Barney is two pies for every bread. The price for Betty is only three-fourths of a pie for every bread. Now, this is important. Therefore, that's your answer. The answer that the prices are going to trade somewhere between three-fourths of a pie and two pies is the answer. But that's not important. I mean, that is important. What's really important to me is that you see why this is a good deal for both of them, all right? So let's say Barney says, you know, I would like another bread, and it's going to cost me, I'm going to, I'm going to give up two pies to get that bread. And Betty says, you know, Barney, don't do that, man. I'll tell you what, all right? I will give you a bread, okay? Because for me, um, every time I produce a bread, I give them three quarters of a pie, all right? So I'm going to give you one of my breads, and I'm only going to ask you for one of your pies. I'll say it again. We've got Betty. She, every time she produces a pie, she gives up four-thirds of a bread. Every time um, he produces a pie, he only gives up a half a bread. Okay? So we've, de we've determined that Barney's going to specialize in pies and that Betty's going to specialize in bread. So the question asked us, and we already, we already relayed the answer, was that the trading's gonna happen between three quarters of a pie and two pies. In other words, for one loaf of bread, okay, one loaf of bread cost Barney two pies, one loaf of bread cost Betty three quarters of a pie. Those are the prices of a bread, okay? Now, when the notion is this, I think I started out to say, let's say Betty specialized in bread and produced 20 of them. And let's say Barney specialized in pies and produced 14 of them. And Barney goes to Betty and says, Betty, um, I'll give you 10 pies 
if you give me eight bread. All right, 10 pies for eight bread. Now, why would, so if she would have give up 10 pies, he'd have four pies left. So he has four pies left, goes right about here. And this would take him up to here, okay? And so let's say he has, he has four pies left, and if he doesn't trade at all, we can actually figure out how many um, bread he'd have, right? So if he gives up 10 pies, he's gonna be able to have five bread, okay? And that would be his, that's the best he could do without trade. But now he goes to Betty and says, Betty, I'll give you these 10 pies. Would you give me eight bread? That would get him way up here to eight bread. That would be outside its production possibility frontier. He'd been consuming at a level he could not consume if he just did not trade and produce everything himself. So Betty, you have to say, okay, does this make any sense to you? So he says, Betty, I'm gonna give you 10 pies and all I want is eight breads. And she goes, 10 pies, wow. Well, she goes, if I were to produce 10 pies, I would have to give up 10 times this or 40 divided by three, I have to give up 13 pies. Wow, he's gonna give me, I have to give him um, for 10 pies, he's only asking for eight breads. So she goes back and says, okay, so eight breads would cost me how many pies, all right? And she said, well, eight breads would cost me eight times this or three-fourths times a pie. So that would be, uh, let me just orient myself here. Again, again, just to get myself back to normal here, he is giving her 10 pies, okay? And he's gonna ask her for eight breads. And let's see if this makes any sense for her. So he gives her 10 pies and she says, okay, if I were to give him eight bread, that would cost me what? Eight bread times three fourths, that would cost me six pies, okay? And he's gonna give me 10 pies for those eight breads. So wait a minute, where does that put Betty? So she goes here, she's producing bread and she gives him um, eight breads. That takes her from 10 to 12 breads, okay? And normally, if she didn't trade and she had 12 breads, she could get six pies. That's what Betty, Betty, there's where Betty could get to if she produced 12 breads and consumed six pies. That's all she can do. And now she's saying, look, Betty, you give me, um, oh, 10. You give me 10 of these pies. I should have gone 10 to here. You give me 10 of these pies. Normally, she'd get to 7.5. And he says, I'll give you eight bread. Well, she gets to go out to here, to eight bread, okay? In other words, Betty gets to go to point B and Barney gets to go to point B if they trade somewhere between those two prices, okay? The point of the story is that if they trade between two pies and three quarters, excuse me, two pies and three quarters of a pie, any price in between there will allow both of these individuals to consume beyond their production possibility frontier. In this particular case, we just had a price where he did very well and got up here. She improved herself, but didn't improve herself perhaps relatively as much as her. But that could him, but that could actually change so long as they started negotiating. The moral of the story is any exchange with a price between two and three quarters of a pie is going to get each of them beyond their production possibility frontier. That's the advantage of trade. Again, underline this. Betty is more productive in both bread and pies than is Barney. And yet, because of comparative advantage, because Barney specialized where he had a lower opportunity cost, and she specialized where she had a lower opportunity cost, and then they trade, they both get to produce or consume at a higher level than if they tried to produce everything by themselves. In other words, again, trade can help big countries, little countries. The United States can trade with Costa Rica and still benefit the United States, benefit Costa Rica. Even though we're more productive in Costa Rica than every good, Trade can still be advantageous for both countries despite differences in absolute advantages for one country over the other. That's the miracle. Okay, we'll go to number seven, which is pretty, pretty much the same question as number six. It says, initially Barney is spending one half his time making pies, the other half specializing in making bread. Betty's doing the same. Again, they're both at their point A's here, all right? And then the same, Barney and Betty could specialize according to the principle of comparative advantage and both could benefit from this new arrangement provided they agreed that one pie will trade somewhere between. So one pie for Barney is equal to half a bread and one pie for Betty is equal to four thirds of bread. 
So any price in between there is advantageous to both of them, okay? So the answer has to be A, half a loaf of bread and four-thirds a loaf of bread is the, is the price range that they could trade and be advantageous to each other, all right? So I will stop there. We were one through six, one through seven, all goes from this one same diagram. It's a great test question. It's something you're extremely likely to see in the test. So make sure you go through this. You can do this by yourself. Review the video. Hopefully it kind of clears things up for you. If not, we can pick it up again in class. I will then come back and we're going to do problems eight, nine, and 10 in a minute. And we'll finish up this chapter on comparative advantage. Okay, see you later. Thank you.